the demon decides to love. As you know that uh, every Sunday I'm trying to uh, start with a, with a reflection. Uh, it's a wonderful devotional book, Sanctuary, written by David uh, Jeremiah. He's a wonderful uh, preacher. So uh, he gives that reflection on John chapter 15, verse uh, 12. The Bible says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The theme of this verse is, decide to love. There are different uh, words in uh, Greek language for uh, love, like uh, eros, phile, and agape. Agape is a divine love, while phile is a brotherly love, and eros is a physical love. The Bible talks about the divine love, unchangeable love, and David Jeremiah give reflection on this word agape. Agape love is God special kind of self-giving. Agape describes a love that comes from and is rooted in God. It is totally selfless love. He delights in giving even though the love one may be unkind, unlovely, and unworthy. Agape love continues to give. Agape determines to do whatever is best for the loved one. It willingly sacrifices itself for another's good. Agape gives them it gets nothing in return. It does not even think of getting something back. Do you think love is just a feeling? It is not a feeling. Love is a decision. The Bible says, God is love. God is not a feeling. The Bible says, we are commanded to love. We don't have any option. Maybe you don't feel like loving. Do it anyway. God commands you to love. Maybe you think you can't love. Then find out whatever it is you are supposed to do. When you love someone and do all those things, depend upon God to do His part. When we do what we are commanded in obedience to God, we discover that grace begins to dwell in our life. Thank you to God for this beautiful reflection. Let us pray to God. It's a prayer of dedication. We are going to dedicate our people, those who are taking part in this service, and those who have joined us to media and they are watching this um, service online. Let us pray and give him thanks. Almighty God, loving Father, we come before you. We give you thanks. We praise your holy name. We give you thanks for the peaceful night and for this wonderful morning. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your genuine and unchangeable love. The love you offer the whole world. You give your only begotten Son that whosoever believe him should not perish but have everlasting life. Loving God, we give you thanks for this wonderful fellowship that we are worshipping you. I ask your anointing and your power upon the children and the people, those who are taking part in this service, 
through reading the scripture, by sharing the word of God, I ask your anointing upon your servant, Brother Harun Khan, as he is going to share your wisdom, your words with your people. Almighty God, please take control of our life. We offer ourselves to you. Please be with us and bless us. In Jesus' name we ask. Let us worship the living God. There will be a hymn on the screen. Our first hymn is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. <coughs> and I believe the children, <coughs> you are welcome, uh, our own Khan family. Uh, they are going to lead us uh, this uh, hymn, uh, Be Still. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> Shall I put that on the screen? Yeah, yes, please. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we come before you because you are worthy of all the praise and honor. You are the glorious God. There is none like you. We give you thanks for our family, for our loved ones. You are the source of blessing. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this wonderful fellowship that whether we are from the different cities, from the different countries, from the different families, but by the power of your Holy Spirit and by the power of your precious blood, we are like a family. 
Almighty God, in this morning, I give you thanks for the children, for their parents. Heavenly Father, I ask your protection for these children. Please uh, be with them and help them that they may glorify your name. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this country, that we are enjoying the freedom of religion. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit, for your precious blood, for your sacrificial blood you shed on the cross. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the, your resurrection, the power of the resurrection, for your glorious hope, Almighty God, as you are coming back to take your bride with you. I ask uh, your blessing and uh, your anointing for your people. Please help us that we may prepare ourselves and we may spread your good news among your people. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this uh, wonderful opportunity that through this media we are reaching to the unreached. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the fellowship of the believers that wherever they are, they are taking part in this service. I ask your blessing upon them. Please be with them and bless them. Loving God, we confess our sins in your presence because you are compassionate. We give you thanks for your grace and your mercy. Please forgive our sins and help us that we may confess our sins to one another. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your wonderful uh, uh, gift of forgiveness. Almighty God, we ask your forgiveness. Please be with us and bless us. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Now is the time that uh, our uh, children, they are going to lead uh, a few songs. So over to you, uh, children, please uh, uh, lead the song. <laughs>
Now we are going to sing another hymn, O Lord my God, when I am cast from wonder. It will be on the screen. Let's uh, try it. Thank you very much, uh, uh, choir, for reading this uh, beautiful hymn. Let us uh, once again offer our prayer, and uh, it's a prayer of intercession. We need to pray for the people, those who are away from us, those who are suffering in the different parts of the world. Let us remember our families and our loved ones. So let us pray. We give you thanks 
our Heavenly Father, for the world that you have made, for its wonder and beauty and wealth. We give thanks for the powers you have given us to enjoy the beauty of this world. Almighty God, we give you praise that you have created us on your own image. Loving God, we pray for the people, those who are away from us. Lord, when we are angry and dismayed at the cruelties of man to man, the blindness of government, the foolishness of people, when we are humbled by our own disobedience to the truth we know, then we remember that you are the Father of all. In this time of uh, prayer, Heavenly Father, we remember that Christ carries the sorrows of all. We believe that your Spirit strives in all men and women for truth and justice. Heavenly Father, restore in us the confidence that your kingdom is sure. Rebuke the violence to wicked and cruel men. Give peace in our time. God bless our land, our queen and her household. Give wisdom to the queen's ministers and guide them in the choices that lay before us today. May we not rest till there is a place of dignity and freedom in our land for young and old, weak and strong. May we find our unity in a revival of true reverence for you, our God. Especially we pray for our Prime Minister, Lord Johnson, and his cabinet members. Loving God, we pray for the scientists and the doctors and the nurses, those who are fighting against this corona virus. We pray for all the researchers and the scientists, those who are trying to discover the vaccine for this coronavirus. We pray for police and the army and all the social workers. We pray for your servants, those who are spreading the good news in this crisis. We pray for all the congregations, those who are able to worship in the churches and those who are worshiping online. We pray for our church and the church members, those who are away from the church, but they are worshiping with us. Loving God, we pray for all the teachers and the parents. Please protect them and bless them. We pray for all of our elderly people, those who are not able to move around, those in the isolation. Give them comfort and strength. Loving God, we remember all the people, those who are having the experience of persecution in the different parts of the world. Especially we remember your people in Pakistan and India and other parts of the world where there is no such freedom to worship you, where there is no such freedom to share your good news. Share your love. Almighty God, be with them and protect them from evil. Heavenly Father, we remember the people who in the hospital are at home. Give them strength and comfort. Those who have lost their loved ones, give them comfort, Heavenly Father. In your precious name, the name which is above all names, the name of Jesus, we ask this prayer. Amen. Let us say the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our trespasses as we forgive those trespasses against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever.
to find that uh, we will listen to another reading from the book of Judges, chapter 7, verse 4 to 7. And Hannah is going to read this chapter. And then there will be time for uh, the reflection and the sermon. And I'm really thankful to my brother uh, Arun Khan, who is preaching uh, the precious word today. So, uh, Arun, I'm going to make you host if you will accept that, and uh, then it will be a better to share with the word. So, I'm making you host now. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Arun, would you make it a uh, uh, bigger screen and uh, the volume is a bit low? Um, you were. Because the, the voice is a little bit low. You just made it uh, uh, the full screen. Can you do that? Uh, now, if you make it a larger screen, just a whole, uh, full screen, can you do this? And now, you make, make me a host and I will do this. Wine press, 
to hide it from the Midianites. The Midianites were forced upon Israel because they had fallen into sin and idolatry. They had fallen away from the ways of the living God. So Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to hide it from the Midianites, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now, obviously the Lord saw Gideon quite differently from the way that he saw himself, because he talks to the angel and he says, I am young and weak and ineffective. But the Lord hailed himself as mighty man of valor. We each need to be less concerned with how we see ourselves and more concerned with how God sees us. You see, in Christ, each one of us is a new man, created according to God in righteousness and true holiness as the author of Ephesians, uh, Paul tells us. He says, being ourselves like this, inevitably affect the way we live in. The law and commission in lead Israel in battle is the Midianite. In response, Gideon assembled an army by the well of Harod with the Midianites encamped to the north. Do you know what were the numbers on both sides? The Gideon's army was 32,000 and the Midianites army was 135,000. Thus Gideon with 32,000 men faced 135,000 Midianites he was outnumbered four to one. For every four Midianites, there was just one Israeli soldier. Imagine Gideon's reaction when the Lord now tells him, the people who are with you are too many. The Lord instructed Gideon to send away all those in his army who were fearful and afraid. Do you know how many went back? 22,000. 22,000 men departed and Gideon was left with just 10,000. At this point, he was outnumbered by a ratio of 13 to 1. But God was not finished. God was not finished. To Gideon's astonishment, he said, the people are still too many. And then he instructed Gideon to bring his men down to the water so that he might test them there by the way they drank from the water. He tests all of us, by the way, by water as well. Because we read in John 7, verses 37 and 38, in the Gospel of John, Jesus gets up on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles and he says, Whoever is thirsty, come and drink from me. And those who drank from him, the living God, the living waters came out of them. Water has always been the testing point of God. In this story of Gideon, God reminds us of another point. At the waters, he wanted them to be vigilant. You've got to be vigilant. How? Picture those who drank in the normal way, laying aside their shield from the left arm and their spear, the sword from the right arm. They went down on both knees and buried their face in the water. In this posture, they were totally vulnerable to a surprise attack. They could not see any approaching enemy, nor did they have their weapons ready to use. In the time they took to get themselves ready, the enemy would have overcome them. What about those who lapped like dogs? It always confuses certain people. But why is a dog mentioned? You know when a dog drinks, it does not bury its nose in the water. 
it stretches out its tongue and laps the water up into its mouth, usually splashing some water around. Those of you who've got a dog, they know what I'm talking about. The dog uses its tongue. How then we should picture those men who lap? They went down, most probably on one knee, retaining their shield in their left arm, and with the right arm they set down their spear or sword beside them. Then with a cupped hand they scooped up the water to their mouths, with their tongues lapping up the water. In this posture they remained alert, constantly watching for any surprise attack. The shields were already in position and they could instantly pick up their spear or sword and have it ready to use. There was no possibility of the enemy taking them by surprise. We see the same situation in the book of Nehemiah when they are building the walls of Jerusalem. They have their souls ready with them. Why? Because they have to be vigilant. Only 300 of Gideon's men passed their second test. They were facing 135,000 Midianites and they were outnumbered now by 450 to 1. There were 450 Midianite soldiers to 1 Israeli soldiers. And I can picture some of them who were dismissed saying to themselves, well, thank God we are out of that. That man Gideon must be crazy. What difference does it make how a man drinks water? Let's see what will become of him and the idiot who stayed with him. In the outcome, of course, we all know, Gideon and his 300 broke through the Midianites and threw them into total confusion. How? With the power of our Lord God. After that, however, other Israelites rallied behind him and inflicted a total defeat on the Midianites. These proportions are eliminated. Only 300 men fulfilled the qualifications for making the initial breakthrough. But once the breakthrough was made, there were thousands of Israelites who were eager to pursue the fleeing Midianites. This whole account vividly illustrates how God is different in his ways and his force, like we read from Isaiah. Left to himself, Gideon would surely have concluded, the people with me are too few. I need to get reinforcements. But God's perspective, dear friends, was quite the opposite. He said, the people with you are too many. In the end, Gideon was left with less than one out of a hundred of those who originally joined him. So for God, my friends, the question is not how many people, but what kind of people. Let me repeat it one more time. For God, the question is not how many people, but what kind of people. In the light of this account, we each need to make a personal assessment. If God should gather an army today like that of Gideon, would I be one of the few who would qualify? Or would I be like the first 22,000 who gave way to fear? Or like the second 10,000 who laid down their weapons and buried their faces in water to drink? It is easy and often normal to bury our faces in the businesses of our daily living, to be absorbed in all the practical needs that confront us every day, to forget that we are in a spiritual conflict with unseen forces of darkness who are continually watching for an opportunity to catch us unprepared. As our brother Paul reminds us, in Ephesians chapter 6. To maintain unceasing vigilance in every situation demands conscious, 
personal discipline. It goes beyond all our normal concepts of Christian conduct and morality. Yet the New Testament clearly warns us, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. According to 1 Peter chapter 5. And if we ignore this warning, we become vulnerable to subtle, unpredictable assaults of Satan. Let me give you an example of our family, or maybe our society here in England and generally in the world now as well, as it's becoming a norm. And that example is of having some holiday, because you want to have a break. Because if you don't want a holiday, if you don't actually use that holiday, our bodies, our systems, our, they won't actually function properly. People like to go for their holidays to different countries, different areas, new places because they want to have a break from their normal life. They do want to have a break from their normal life, but what I've learned, dear friends, dear saints, is that the adversary, the Satan, never takes a holiday. Just when we feel our greatest need to relax, Satan releases some totally unanticipated pressure against us and we may easily be caught without our weapons ready for the immediate use, with our faces buried in this water of holidays. Does that mean we no longer take holidays? No. But it means that we do not bury our faces in our holidays. We do not lay down our weapons. We have learned that holidays are often times when we need to exercise the greatest vigilance. But holidays are just one example that would apply in many different areas. Family relationships, business activities, jobs, special celebrations, educational opportunities. We can participate in all of these, but we must not bury our faces in any of these. Remember, in Gideon's army, less than one out of a hundred qualified. Would the proportions be any different today? Are we vigilant today? Are we drinking the water like vigilant people? Or are we burying our face in the water? May God bless you all. Amen. Very much, uh, Brother Harun, for this uh, beautiful uh, reflection and uh, sharing the word of God. It's a great blessing. <clears throat> uh, as uh, my brother Harun was talking about uh, uh, how God is looking for people, you know, and uh, there was an uh, issue at the time of Jesus when he was seeking uh, his disciples. So there was different kind of the people. There was a tax collector and uh, there were fishermen so they were all part of the people around him they wanted to follow him but jesus was uh, very selective in that you know and uh, god is only uh, looking uh, our uh, availability and he's giving us ability so it's a beautiful thing that we need to offer ourselves to our savior lord jesus christ and he will give us uh, uh, power and anointing that we may serve him so this is the time to Give him praise, our children. They are ready for uh, um, for the next hymn. Thank you very much, Ibrahim and Hannah, and uh, little ones. <laughs> so now let us uh, praise him, uh, sing him, shine, Jesus, shine. Okay, over to you, Vida.